Hi guys, uh, welcome to Metal Rocks On. It's Friday, there is some new music out. And today I want to talk about uh, Saxons. It's the 25th album by Saxon uh, called More Inspirations, but it's actually not their own song. So it's their second cover album. So when I say 25 albums, that includes two albums that are cover songs. Now, this album came out today and yeah, it's called More Inspirations. So that indicates like that there was a previous one called Inspirations. And uh, these are actually not like cover songs that um, Saxon has been playing live or anything like that. It's more, as the, <laughs> as the name indicates, um, songs that have inspired them or bands that have inspired them. So they're kind of pay paying homage to, to those bands. Um, before we start talking about this album, I want to kind of remind you of our social media. We have Twitter, TikTok, uh, Facebook and Instagram. That's at Metal and Rock Song. Uh, so check that out. We share some shorter videos and different kind of stuff on those platforms. So, and yeah, you can keep up to date with that. Now, me and Saxon, we have a very long history. I mean, uh, they were kind of one of those bands, this new wave of British heavy metal back in the 80s. And uh, I, I followed them and they, you know, they had this strong arm of the law, wheels of steel and all these things. But then I kind of lost track of them, but uh, started listening to them again. Um, no, yeah, I would say kind of recently, like two, two, three years ago, I kind of started refreshing them a little bit and listened to some of the, the, the later stuff. And they came out with an album, I think, in February last year, um, and that's called Carpe Diem. It's actually a really, really good album and surprised me a lot. I didn't expect it. It's heavier than the older stuff. And then I was lucky enough to see them live at a festival here in the Czech Republic last summer. And they were really, really good. And I was very impressed with the, the band. They were, yeah, super tight. And I mean, and that's what I kind of like about these older bands, that the quality of their performance has just improved, improved, improved. Of course, the gear that they have access to also improves and stuff like that. But at that uh, festival that I saw them, they were really, really good. And uh, and I was very impressed with the guitar players. Uh, I mean, obviously, Bill sings very well, considering that the guy is 70 years old. And um, and the drummer, this Nigel Glocker, he's like a, he's like a fucking machine. Um, and in the band, yeah, so in the band today, or in, on this album, are Bill Bifford, who's the singer. He's been there from the start. Paul Quinn, who's the guitar player, has been there from the start. But just now, um, they announced that he will not tour with the band. He will still probably play on the albums and maybe do some of the shows in the UK or wherever it is that he is located. But uh, yeah, he will not be touring with the band as extensively as before. And then Nigel Clocker on the drums, uh, there is Nip Carter on the bass and Doc Scarrat on the guitars. And yeah, all these guys have been around like were in the band for a, a really long time. You know, some of them like Nigel, the drummer has kind of come and gone. Um, and um, yeah, so they did an earlier one called Inspirations kind of during the pandemic. And uh, I think a lot of bands were doing a lot of different stuff during the pandemic, apart from writing their own music and stuff like that. But I think, yeah, you saw a lot of kind of more of an experimental thing. I think there was a kind of an atmosphere of we don't know what's going to happen. Let's do something that is maybe a little bit more nostalgic and stuff like that. I, I don't know. I have a feeling that this time for artists was a very interesting time because you know, most other people could kind of get on with life, but they couldn't tour, they couldn't perform, they couldn't do the stuff that actually pays the bills and can keep them going. And um, and on that, like on that first cover album, Inspirations, um, they did kind of, for me, that was more like usual suspects. There was Rolling Stones, there was Paperback Writer by the Beatles, there was Immigrant Song by uh, Led Zeppelin, there was uh, Stone Free, Jimi Hendrix, there was a Motorhead Song, Bomber, I think. Uh, uh, there was um, the purple song Speed King and uh, what else was there? There was uh, ACDC song. So for me, that was more like usual suspects somehow, you know, bands that I could see. I mean, some of them were kind of contemporary to Saxon, but like ACDC, for example, uh, they had an ACDC song called uh, Problem Child. And uh, but yeah, like these were bands that I kind of would easily understand that somehow Saxon would associate themselves with. Um, I wasn't very impressed with this uh, album. I mean, it wasn't bad or anything like that, but it just didn't do anything. It just somehow failed to capture me. And and, uh, uh, and then they said, okay, we're going to do more. 
and I was like, ah, okay, are you sure about that? Do you, do you actually want to do more? But obviously they didn't listen to me. And they went ahead and made inspirations too. Uh, but when I saw the track listing there, I was kind of surprised. It was a kind of a change from the, the, the earlier covers album, Inspirations. And uh, so they have a, a song, like if I go just through the track list, they have a song by, by The Animals, We Gotta Get Out of This Place. They have a song by the sensational Alex Harvey Band, The Faith Healer. Um, they have an Alice Cooper song, uh, from the inside. They have a CC Top song, Chevrolet. They have The Who, Substitute, great classic. Uh, they have Gypsy by Yuria Heap, Man on the Silver Mountain by Rainbow, and uh, Detroit Rock City by Kiss, one of my all-time favorite songs. Uh, Rasa Manas by Nazareth, and uh, probably never been as many Zs in a name a song and a band, Nazareth Rasa Manas, and Tales of Brave Ulysses by The Cream, or Cream. And uh, and I was like, when I saw this, I was like, okay, th this could be interesting because this is kind of a little bit more diverse somehow or strays a little bit off the expected path, let's say. And when I saw the list, I thought, okay, I'm going to like Man on the Silver Mountain, I'm going to love Detroit Rock City, and... Uh, and probably Gypsy, uh, the Yuri Heap song. Uh, and then the rest of the songs I was kind of iffy on. And to be very honest, there were songs there that I didn't really know. Um, but uh, so I, I gave it a few spins and, and the good ones, there were some surprises there. There were some songs that turned out to be better than I expected and some songs that turned out to be worse. And the good ones are Man on the Silver Mountain. It's never easy to do anything that Ronnie James Dio did. That's a Rainbow song that Ronnie did with Rainbow. Great song. And uh, what I like about it is that Bill doesn't really try to imitate Ronnie. He kind of just gives us his own touch and uh, and he gets he gets it well done. Uh, Gypsy, the Uriah Heap song, they they give it like, a, I mean, obviously that song was made in, I don't know, like in the 70s or something. So they give it a lot of kind of a heavier touch than it than it had back then. I actually saw Uriah Heap play Gypsy live and uh, now in December, and that, it, this performance of it kind of rem reminded me of that because actually Yuri Hip are super heavy when they're playing live. Uh, Substitute, the Who song, is actually really good, and uh, and I think that there I like how Bill's voice kind of fits nicely on the song and gives it slightly a different flavor from the the old version. Uh, then there was a song that I didn't really know from the inside, the Alice Cooper song. I uh, really didn't realize how good this song I had heard it before but I didn't know it like but it's a great song and they they do don't use the piano that Alice Cooper uses on that original version they use the guitars there and they and it's it's a really really cool song and 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 of course it helps that the song itself you know the original version is is great but I feel that with this this performance Saxon adds to it somehow you know they they make they take a good song and make it better uh, Tales of Brave Ulysses by uh, Cream, they do a really good job there. Um, same thing, uh, the soloing is, is really great and uh, the song kind of sounds super, super heavy, which I like, like it with this song because I sometimes felt with those Cream songs like this one and also with uh, White Room, for example, that they can easily be kind of cranked up and made heavier and they, and they do a great job, Saxon, on that one, on this one. Now, then there are some not so great ones. Uh, Chevrolet by CC Top. I, I don't know, there's just something missing in the groove there, which I think kind of only um, uh, CC Top can do. CC Top delivers that song as a, it's thin. It's actually, it's a very thin song, but it just grooves and it just has this rawness that I feel gets missing. And it almost feels like it's too slow for Saxon, you know, I don't know. Uh, the biggest disappointment for me was Detroit Rock City. I, I don't know. Um, I haven't heard anyone do that song as well as Kiss does, and uh, but I feel that that song has a lot to offer. That you can e really bring a punch into it, and they don't. I don't feel they do that. And uh, and on that one, Bill is singing through some effects that I feel kind of they take the roughness a lot away from it, and. Uh, yeah, it, it just softens the whole thing up and it's missing that edge. Um, another song that I didn't really like is The Faith Healer. That's by this um, sensational Alex Harvey band, which 
to be very honest, I didn't really know a lot about, but I read up about them a little bit. And apparently this song uh, was out for like two years from like 71 or something. And then in 1973, that great year, 50 years ago, it was played live at the Reading Festival or Reading. Some people say Reading Festival, but I would say Reading. Um, the Reading Festival in England. And uh, apparently at some magical time during sunset or something, seven minute song was delivered and it became popular then. And, uh, but it, I, I don't know, it's just, I think it was the substances that people were having at that uh, Reading Festival that kind of helped them ingest that song and make it so iconic for them because uh, I don't know it's um, it's not a great song it's over seven minutes long and it's kind of acidy kind of journey and at least I can say though that Saxon's version of it is better than the original original I went back to check on that one uh, but yeah didn't really like that and then there are kind of two okay songs on this album where I was like um, I'm not sure on, on them I mean there is this Ras Manas <laughs> Rasamanas, Rasamanas, um, and it doesn't really add a lot to the original version that Nazareth did. If you listen to the Nazareth version and then this version, I mean, obviously it sounds different, but it, it's it's almost too similar. And uh, and then there is this uh, animal song, We've Gotta Get Out of This Place, which I'm kind of on the fence with that. I really, really like that old version. I think I saw it was on Ed Sullivan show or something like that. I remember it, my, my mom showing me this on the TV or something in the old days. And uh, and it's not bad in Saxon's hands, but it kind of, I don't know, I kind of, that's one of those songs where I kind of liked it the, more the way it was. Um, so, the verdict, guys, the verdict. I'm going to give this 7.5 out of 10. It's not a bad album at all. Uh, the pros are that there are some really, really good songs, and uh, I feel that Bill's voice gets to shine. The guitaring is great on a lot of them. Um, I mean, it's obviously a brilliant band, um, and it's nice to see what actually influenced them. And there were some surprises in there, like, you know, Alice Cooper, CC Top for me were, were a surprise, and obviously the sensational Alex Harvey band. Ooh, and uh, yeah, but uh, the negatives. There are some effects being used on the vocals that I don't really like. I, I, I feel that I like Bill's voice and uh, I don't I don't like them to mess with that too much. Um, and then, yeah, it's lacking sometimes kind of that punch, you know, like in Detroit Rock City, it, it's missing that edge, uh, that kind of going in and kill it. Um, and then, yeah, I, I think like, I do get it that they put out an album like this, but it's not necessarily something that I want as a fan, you know, like it's, uh, but on the other hand, then I was thinking, would I want to hear this live? And I'm not sure about that either. So obviously the band has the rights to do whatever the fuck they want. They've earned that right uh, over all these years. And, uh, and it's not a bad album, but I, I don't know, I, I somehow, I, I had the same feeling with that album by Deep Purple, uh, Turning Into Crime, that they came out with last year. I, 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 I somehow lose the purpose of this. Why, you know? I mean, obviously they're doing it for themselves, maybe more than for the fans. Um, so, yeah, that's it. That's uh, more inspirations by Saxon. I would be curious to hear what you think. What's the best song on this album? Uh, what's the worst one? And uh, shoot bands like this making cover albums at all. Uh, until next time, follow, like, share, comment, do all that usual stuff. Subscribe to the channel, all that. And there'll be some more stuff coming up. See you around. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.